or there's guys out there who have scattered focus when it comes to this coding stuff. They may be coding, but they're also trying to do 20 different things at once, right? And these guys don't focus on the basics. They constantly feed into fear mongering, oh, coding jobs are going to be automated and all this nonsense. And they don't get anywhere. Whereas there's other guys out there who work hard, they focus on the basics and they get paid in no time. I'm going to talk about the difference here specifically. I'll talk about how I would go about getting an entry-level programming job as fast as possible. Let's assume you're at zero to minimal experience right now. I'll share the advice that I would give to get from that to a coding job as fast as possible, right? Without further ado, let's dive into it. I remember clearly I was sitting at a table with someone sitting across from me and the person sitting across from me is a crime analyst, right? And I'm sitting down. This is back when I was doing my crim degree, by the way. And I'm asking them, oh, how can I be a crime analyst? I want to do this job. It looks great. It looks awesome, right? And they're, they're very kind. They're giving me all this great advice. But what's the reason I wanted to be a crime analyst? The only reason I wanted to be a crime analyst was because it looked like a chill job and it looked like it paid good money. That was it. And I was putting in like no focused effort towards being a crime analyst, right? I was doing these easy things like going and talking to people and such things. But I wasn't looking at, oh, what's what's the crime statistics in my area? If I get this job, what, what kind of things will I have to be doing? Have I done any of them on my own time, right? Or like read a book on it or literally any effort that would have required mental power or physical power, I didn't do it. And unsurprisingly, I didn't become a crime analyst, right? This leads me to the first point. This is something I've shared on my channel constantly. This is a piece of advice I share all the time. And the main reason I'm so passionate about this is because this is what truly changed my self-improvement journey. It's truly what helped me in starting to finally get results. Before, I would just be like doing these uh, random things, 20 different things, hoping something would work. And I felt like I wasn't really progressing in anything, right? And I truly believe the concept I'm about to share is the only reason I'm in a well-paying coding job at the moment. Had I not followed this, I'm confident I would not be in the position I am in. And that concept is focusing on less. Focusing on one thing is what I did. But just focusing on less is the main point here. Right before I would have like this big to do list. So I got to do this and I got to do this. I meditate, journal, and uh, all these things. And because it was so overwhelming, I'd end up getting basically none of it done. And when I just said, screw it, I don't care if I get nothing else done all day, I'm going to make sure my coding work is done. When I did that, that's when I started to make great progress. Right? I went from zero, which is my starting point, to getting a six figure job in under two years. Right? And again, I truly believe. If I didn't follow this concept, I would not be in the position I'm in, right? So point number one, again, I say it all the time and I'm going to say it in this video as well. Focused effort is very important. Part of the issue here is these people say, oh, you got to hustle, bro. You got to grind, bro. Sleep two hours a day, work five jobs if you have to. Like, no, take that thought, throw it out the window. We don't listen to those people. These people put a train of thought on us that doesn't serve us whatsoever, whatsoever. Right. Look, if you're in a similar position to me where you're struggling with this discipline and all these things, right, going from that to like this self-improvement rock star who's like waking up at five and then uh, doing 20 different things before, her, you know, it, it, the clock even hits 12, like it's too big of a leap. It's too big of a leap. You know, you can try it if you want, but I'm telling you, it didn't work for me. And this is the best advice I can give on uh, on the front of getting to our end goal. Right. Because even if you have the best resources, the best computer, the best everything, if you're not focused, you won't get anywhere. Right. So that's point number one. Now, the second thing I remember is, um, you know, I was I had just started my computer science degree at this time and my laptop was over here. I open it. I open my uh, Gmail and I had gotten a response from a company that I had applied to. Right. So, again, open my email and then they, I see that they sent me a text screen. Right. So click on the text screen and all these coding questions pop up. And my mind is just blank because I don't understand a single one of them, right? And unsurprisingly, I failed that text screen. Another thing I remember is around the seven to eight month mark, right? So zero is again, when I just started this CS stuff, around the seven to eight month mark is when I actually started building projects, right? So I started to build some very basic front end projects, right? And then I started sending my resume out. And I got a response and I got a job offer, right? So what's the point I'm trying to make here? The point I'm making is the basics work. In the first instance, uh, one basic that's always touted is lead code, focusing on the technical, um, uh, you know, problem solving, specifically through lead code. Had I done that, 
I would have gotten that. Uh, I would have at the very least passed the tech screen of that first job and then progressed forward, right? And the second instance, when I focused on the basic advice of building projects and I put some projects on my resume in a very short time, I ended up getting a job offer, right? So focus on the basics. The basics work. Part of the issue here is these people will say, oh, buy my course for these 10 secrets to become a programmer. Oh, and this one secret to become a programmer. Oh, uh, you know, do this one thing to become a programmer. Like, no, take that thought throw out the window. We don't listen to those people. Again, they put a train of thought on us that doesn't serve us whatsoever. Whatsoever. There's no secret to this stuff. There's no secret sauce here. You know, the answer is pretty boring, to be honest. But the boring basics are what works. So let's dive into those boring basics now. Let's assume that you're just starting off, right? I would say focus on a resource like the Odin Project or Free Code Camp. I'm a huge, huge fan of the Odin Project. So I would say focus on that. It's harder than Free Code Camp and harder than, honestly, a lot of other resources because it doesn't hold your hand as much. But the value you get from it is immense, I feel. So Odin Project, Free Code Camp, doesn't matter. Or maybe even some other resource, right? These are just uh, some of the resources that I like. But any resource doesn't matter. You take these resources. The Odin Project will have you build projects. Free Code Camp will as well. Um, and then once you've followed these uh, resources, you should already have some projects. At least from the Odin Project for sure. I actually don't remember Free Code Camp has you build projects you can put on your portfolio. But the Odin Project definitely does. So you have some projects at this point. Now, if you know with just those projects, you can try try throwing out your resume, see if you get hits. If those projects are too basic. And I would start building some other projects on the side as well. Now, projects are one of those things. I understand how intimidating they are to get started with. I, I did not do projects for so long. And even the projects I built were so basic, right? And then I focused on building projects earlier, building some little bit more complex, harder projects earlier. I do believe I would have gotten to my end goal faster, right? I understand all the annoyances that come with building projects of not knowing what to build, building something for one hour and then getting bored with it, working on something for a day and then um, leaving it unfinished and going on another project. Like I know all those feelings. I really do. And that's why I procrastinated on it for so long. But I hope that you can learn from my mistake and understand despite all the boring stuff, despite uh, how much of a pain in the butt it is, it's a very important aspect because you have no experience and you need to showcase that experience somehow. And that's through projects. All right. So this alone, in my opinion, should be enough to uh, get you to a point where you're getting hits, right? People are responding to your application. If it's not, then the next point of the, uh, point of the um, uh, process is networking, right? Now, networking is something I've always sucked at, so I won't even give advice there because just projects, throwing out applications was enough for me to get hits. But if it's not, you know, go out to uh, tech conferences, reach out to people on LinkedIn, network, network, network and try to get some response to your foot in the door that way, right? So hopefully through these combination of things, you'll now be at a point where you're getting hits on your application. Great. Next, the actual interview, right? So in the interview, there's going to be a technical aspect, behavioral aspect. For the behavioral aspect, the STAR principle has helped me immensely. I'll leave a resource in the description that talks about it. Um, I cannot talk about it in this video because it'll make it too long. If you'd like me to talk about it in a separate video, let me know. More than happy to do that. But for now, I'll leave a resource in the description. STAR principle helped me greatly with behavioral interviews. Utilize it. It'll definitely help you out. Next thing, the technical aspect. For that, we're going to focus on lead code. Now, I think people are sometimes surprised that I leave lead code to the end because a lot of these uh, other YouTubers are like, oh, lead code, lead code, lead code, right? They tell you to almost exclusively focus on lead code. The reason I don't is because the goal here is to get, just get from point zero to into the programming world as soon as possible, right? We're not necessarily aiming for Facebook, Google. If that's where we get a response from, great, right? But that's not what we're aiming for. Our goal is just to get your foot in the door as soon as possible. And for the smaller companies, some of them won't even ask lead code questions. And if they do, they'll be on the easier side, right? So that's why I put it till the end. First, let's make sure we're at a point where our resume is getting hits because if our resume isn't getting hits and we're some lead code expert, like who cares, right? We can't really showcase the skill. So anyway, lead code and to get better at lead code, I'm going to leave a resource in the description as well. Let me know if you'd like me to make a video on how to get better at, uh, you know, technical interviews, lead code, etc. I'll be honest, I've never been like great at lead code, right? Not even close, but still I've done a okay. So um, yeah, you know, I'll leave the resource in the description. Let me know if you want me to make a video talking about it. More than happy to do that as well. But if you do those things, your resume should be getting hits. 
you get the interviews, you're improving on the behavioral aspect, you're improving on the technical aspect. It's only, you know, a matter of time before you inevitably get a job. So be confident, keep on putting in the hard work. And uh, yeah, I'm confident that you will get the job. Now I'll just put a little bonus tip here. One thing I remember is throughout this computer science journey, right? I was following the Pomodoro technique. So I'm sitting at my desk and the Pomodoro technique is basically like you focus for 20 minutes and take a five minute break or 25 minutes, uh, 25 minute focus, five minute break. So I'm doing it, you know, I'm doing my work and 25 minutes later, oh, it's break time, right? So I reach for my phone and the five minute break would turn into a 10 minute, sometimes even a 30 minute break for me before I'd get back to work. The point I'm trying to make here is look into deep work. Right. There's a huge book by Cal Newport that talks about it. So again, it'd be hard to summarize. If you want me to summarize that, tell me more than happy to make a video about it. But look into deep work, right? Deep work, the long and short of it is instead of, you know, working in these constantly distracted blocks where you work for 20 minutes, I know you're reaching for your phone or something like this. Instead of doing that, you focus on one task with no distraction, phone in another room, everything. And just, you know, you focus for a block of time, hour, two hours, four hours. And when I started doing this, before when I was doing the Pomodoro technique, I would literally be reading something. I would read like a big uh, paragraph, like, you know, reading it on my screen. And I would understand none of it. I'd have to go back. I'd read it and, and like in my mind, I'm like daydreaming. And then like, oh, I, I, my attention would come back. And then I have to read that whole paragraph again. And ever since I've implemented deep work, that still happens sometimes, right? Of course, your attention won't be perfect. But it happens a lot less. And I feel I can absorb a lot more. So that's the bonus tip I'd give. I just want to end this video off by saying, hey, be kind to yourself throughout this process. This is not an easy journey whatsoever, right? My background was, again, I, I uh, failed multiple high I say again because I've talked about it uh, in uh, some other videos. But anyway, I failed multiple high school courses. Didn't graduate high school on time. I failed a college course. I was a super average college student, right? And all throughout my life, I'd like go on these endeavors. Like at one time I was uh, making like affiliate websites and other things. Right. And I, I would constantly go on these endeavors and I would stick with them for maybe two weeks and I'd drop them like a hot potato. Right. Like I didn't have anything in my track record to show that I could actually stick with something and even be mildly successful at it. Right. And at that point I was working, um, a customer service job, which had me commuting one hour, 30 minutes to the office just to get yelled at by customers and commuting one hour, 30 minutes back, just to get paid a little above minimum wage. And I was like, no, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. So that's when I started focusing on coding and I gave it, uh, you know, put focused effort towards it. And there was so much doubt throughout the process, right? Because I felt like this is like this smart people career and I don't have like a math background. I don't have, uh, again, my academic track record is horrific, right? So I had major imposter syndrome all throughout. Ultimately, I never felt smart enough to do it, never felt, and deep, deep down, like part of me never even felt that I would be able to make it in the industry, truly. And I remember, this, this, is, this is crazy, but I remember like being up at midnight, like taking IQ tests on my phone. And that's because, that's because I would see online, oh, you need this much IQ to be a programmer. And I'd be like taking IQ tests on my phone. Oh, do I meet it? Do I not meet it? And just all these things, right? And it's like, don't listen to all that nonsense online. Oh, you're not smart enough. Oh, uh, you need to be a Harvard grad, bro, to become a software engineer. You need to be a math genius. Like, no, no, you don't. No, you don't. Right? Work hard. Be kind to yourself throughout this process and be proud of yourself every single day for showing up. A lot of people are going to start this. Not a lot of people will finish it. All right? So I believe in you. But frankly, what I believe doesn't matter. What you believe matters. So I hope you believe in yourself too. And let's go and get this, uh, get this programming job. Now, I just want you to imagine for a second. Imagine you take this advice, you run with it, and now you've got enough money to, you know, move out, have fun, go out with friends, do whatever you want, right? You have enough money to, like, go out on dates or get yourself new things. I didn't even have enough money to, like, go out on dates. So that was a big thing for me. I, I, I didn't want to keep borrowing that from my parents, right? And I was driving, like, a crappy old car, and I've finally been able to get a, get a new car as well. I want you to imagine that you're now in a position, in a job that you don't dread going into, where you have great work-life balance and you're working remotely, right? Imagine that. And that's the path you're on. Hey, keep working hard. I believe in you. But again, what I believe doesn't matter. What you believe matters. So I hope you believe in yourself too. And that's all I got for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Ultimately, 
I want this to be our positive little community where we help each other, support each other, and help each other get to the next level in life. So please come join the community. I'll leave my Instagram, TikTok in the description, also somewhere here. Please do support there as well. Please do like, comment, subscribe. I'll talk to you later. Peace.